Cool, two different types of acids you gotta know how to name. And the first we call binary acids. Call them binary because they only contain two elements, hydrogen and something else. So things like HCl, H2Se, H2S. These are all examples of binary acids. So H2O could be a binary acid as well. Now technically these are also molecular compounds because they're made up of only non-metals. So it's typically proper when these are dissolved in water to name them as acids. If they're not dissolved in water, probably more proper to name them as, as a molecular compound. So if you see aqueous after them, that's probably when you want to name it as an acid rather than a molecular compound. So in this case, HCl as an acid. So it turns out for binary acids, start with your most famous one. This is hydrochloric acid. So notice the distinguishing thing that tells me that it's the chlorine binary acid is this part right here. Everything else is the same for your binary acid. It's hydro something ic acid. So and that something is just tells me what the other element is. So in this case, Se is selenium. So we're going to call this hydro, save some space, something ic acid. And what's the something? Selenic, it turns out. And so that's hydroselenic acid. So this one here as well, we'll say hydro, save some room, and then ic acid. And so which one is this? Yeah, hydrosulfuric. So they use the whole word here. They cut off the em and selenium there. You kind of got to know. But in this case, hydrosulfuric acid, which is tricky because there's also just a plain old sulfuric acid that's not him. It's H2SO4, it turns out, as we'll see in a second here. So, but this is how you name binary acids. If you know hydrochloric acid, the rest of them are pretty easy to follow suit. Your other type of acid, you've got to know how to name are your oxo acids, sometimes also called oxy acids with a Y, same diff. And these are the acids of your oxy or oxo anions, which are the polyatomic ions that contain oxygen. If you notice, most of your polyatomic ions do. So we already dealt with one of these in another context. We didn't actually name it. But for sulfur, there are two oxo acids. If you look, SO42 minus, what is that called? What polyatomic ion was that again? Sulf8. Sulf when you're naming the corresponding oxo acid, 8 turns into ick, like you ate something disgusting and said ick. And so this is, instead of sulfate, it's the sulfuric acid. Correspondingly then, SO32 minus is what polyatomic ion? Sulfite, sulfite. So SO42 minus sulfate, SO32 minus sulfite. And when you're naming it as a corresponding oxo acid, it becomes us, O-U-S. And so this is sulfurous acid. So naming these oxo acids means that you've probably already memorized what? Polyatomic. Your polyatomic ions will help you significantly. So again, it becomes ic, it becomes us. And you can't just memorize the number of oxygens here, because like in this case with nitrogen, it's not four and three. It's three and two for the number of oxygens involved. And so in this case, the one with more oxygens, which gives the other atom the higher oxidation state, is eight, and this one's ick, or I'm sorry, eight and it versus ick and us. Same thing here, with three oxygens with nitrogen, it's not the uh, it and us, it's now the higher oxygen one for nitrogen compounds. And so it's the eight and the ick. So NO3 minus one is the nitrate ion, so this is nitric acid. And NO2 minus is the nitrite ion, so this is nitrous acid. For chlorine, bromine, and iodine, there aren't just two of these. There are four of them. So in this case, if we pretend the top one and the bottom one don't exist for a minute, then this and this one we'd name in the same way we just named the other ones. What would HClO3 be called by that reasoning? So, well, he's actually the one with more oxygens out of the two remaining. Oh, sorry, chloric. chloric acid. Awesome. And then HClO2 would be called? Chlorous. Chlorous acid. So now we had to figure out how to name these extremes, new rules. So HClO here, which can also be written as HOCl, by the way, 
we had to come up with a way of saying that this thing has lower number of oxygens than chlorous acid. So what do you call it when somebody, not when they have diabetes, but when they have chronically low blood sugar and have to eat periodically throughout the day or they get faint? Uh, not that one, but hypoglycemic. So hypoglycemic, because hypo means low or below, and hypoglycemic, low blood sugar. So in this case, to say that we have lower number of oxygens than chlorous acid, we call this guy hypochlorous acid. Cool, on the other end, what do you call a kid that has eaten too much sugar? Soda, cookies, candy, and it's just going crazy all over the place. They are hyper, hyper. And hyper actually means, is short for actually hyperactive in that case. So, but hyper in this case means above or more than. And so in this case, we had to come up with a way of saying that HClO4 has more oxygens than chloric acid. So we said, okay, let's call it hyperchloric acid. And then the lords of chemistry, one of them with the big white beard spoke up and said, you know, we could make this harder and trick them if we just took the H and the Y off. And so they did. And so this is not hyperchloric acid, it's just plain old perchloric acid. And it works the same way with bromine and iodine, the same four. So like for iodine, you'd have periotic acid, iotic acid, iotis acid, and hypoiotis acid, so on and so forth. Any questions on naming oxyacids? Fantastic.